Hello and welcome to another episode of Kerbal Space Program. Um, today we are going to be building a GPS constellation using the Figaro uh, GPS system, which is like the first functional GPS system in the game. Um, it's kind of more interesting than the ISA map set in that you actually have to have a realistic setup for uh, the GPS to work. There's just a receiver part that goes on. You don't actually need to have anything other than the receiver part on uh, sh and plus the constellation for the thing to work. Um, the satellites just have to have the, the word GPS in their name. So I'm going to put one of the receivers on this little uh, rover here and we'll set it outside and we'll actually see how this thing is going to work and then it will be a good way to know if it's working in the future. So I'm going to launch a fairly realistic constellation of satellites kind of like what is actually around Earth for the United States GPS system. So that's going to be like, what, 24, 26 satellites, something like that. And uh, this needs at least four satellites at any given time to actually function correctly. So it's actually fairly useful. I'm having trouble getting this placed here. It's actually fairly useful for knowing where you are. The ISA shows you on a map. But it's a little harder to get the coordinate information just because of the way the interface works. I kind of wish that ISA MapSat had an interface that had this little readout down here um, that you see in the corner, the bottom left-hand side of the screen there. So we'll just go ahead and deploy the rover wheels. I love this rover, by the way. It's an ant rover. The DEMV Mark V, I think it is. It's one of my favorite rovers in this game, actually. So we're just going to park this off the runway so that it doesn't get uh, deleted at any point. We'll just leave it right here. And at some point, hopefully, we will actually get the GPS working and it will have a readout there. So for now, we can go back to the Space Center. Go back to the Vehicle Assembly Building here. And we're going to load up something I've prepared earlier, which is this GPS launch system here. Now, it only has enough fuel to really get into curb in orbit and do a few maneuvers from there I'm using four launches at a time because we're gonna have four satellites in each of these orbits there's gonna be uh, four satellites like I just said uh, they're gonna be roughly spaced out so that they're in the you know 25% around the planet um, we're gonna do six different groups of four and they're gonna be launched at 55 degree inclinations like the actual satellite network is in real life so the reason I'm doing this with four at a time like this instead of doing it in a kind of a simpler fashion is that I want to launch these one hour apart so that we'll get an equal distribution of satellites around the planet without having to do any sort of complicated thinking about things. It should come out pretty close to being perfect. It'll be good enough for it to work. Um, it only needs four satellites at a time to actually work. Um, this is a pretty typical launch. This launch vehicle is one of my workhorses for satellite launches. So. I'm just going to skip this launch and I'll show you what we're going to be doing with their orbits in a minute. Alright, so at this point our first rocket has reached a, a lower parking orbit. Eventually these are going to be at a higher orbit, um, what's called a semi-synchronous orbit. I think it's like 15... 1,588 meters or something like that, or kilometers. Um, we're just going to leave this thing pretty much up here and launch all six of these units uh, basically I'm just waiting for the timing to be right right now so I have to repeat that launch six more times we're boosting the orbit up at this point to a thousand kilometers I guess that I, yeah I just want this is post commentary again by the way um, I just went with the 1,000 kilometer orbits, I guess, for the parking orbit, so they'd be a little bit higher and a little bit slower and closer to what we want for our final orbits to be. All of these are going to be deployed like I've been doing with the other satellites where we use ion engines to get them into their finalized orbits. So it's it's a slow process. It's better to get it close as I can to start off with because um, basically these are going to be... It's a lot of launching going on, so... We'll just get this orbit circularized and do the next five launches, and I will be back in a minute. Alright, so at this point you can see the braided pattern of the satellite constellation starting to take uh, form here. So, it's kind of hard to tell what I've done here, but you can see there's a bunch of orbits now going around Kerbin. And each one of them is just one of these, uh, six of these 
rockets that has four of these satellites. I ended up using the the Stay Putnik module, the little spherical drone, just because I thought it kind of looked like, you know, I wanted to make it look different, and it looked like it could have instruments inside of it that would be for the GPS antennas and stuff. I don't know. It just seemed like it, it made some sense, and it kind of looked neat. It's a cute little satellite, I guess. So I'm swinging around like I usually like to do and getting a face the correct way for prograde. We're going to start decoupling some of these satellites and getting them up into their orbits. Now, the like usual, the individual satellites do not actually have any, uh, what's it called? They don't have mech jeb on it. So this one's still actually getting up to its 1,000 uh, kilometer orbit here. Um which it looks like it's the last one that needs to be boosted up to that altitude there. So I really like how these braided satellite pattern things end up looking. That looks like a real satellite constellation there. So now that we've reached our parking orbit here, we're going to decouple the first of the satellites. Um, and we're going to get the solar panels deployed and all that stuff. So this is going to work essentially the same way as with the communication satellites. But instead of launching three of them, of course, we're launching four. And we're going to be using the ion engines to boost this up to what is our final desired orbit. And I'm just keeping an eye on it here. Closing in, I believe it's one, one thousand, or one million, yeah, one million five hundred eighty-eight thousand is what we're looking for. And we're closing in. Even with a small satellite, these ion things take a while. This episode took a really long time to record, and it's going to be really, really short in the end, I think, too. It's probably going to be like a 15, 20 minute episode. Alright, so we're still just buzzing that up the rest of the way. And we're going to have to do the same thing that we did before with phasing orbits and all that stuff. But we're going to have to do it 26 times. Well, 25 times. The first satellite's orbit is doesn't really matter. So it's actually more like... It is more like 20 times or something like that because the first one in each one of these doesn't matter. That's going to be the one that we set everything relative to. So we just need to get these all up into their final 1,588,000 meter orbits. And then they will be in a semi-synchronous orbit, which means that their orbits are about three hours long. Kerbin's day is six hours, a little over six hours. So a semi-synchronous orbit means that twice a day they pass over the same spot. Instead, you know, a regular synchronous orbit would be you pass over the same spot every day, and then a stationary orbit is that you're just planted over that same spot. You can't get stationary orbits, obviously, with any sort of inclination. It has to be relatively uh, flat with the equator for that to work. So this is, this is a good way to do this. So this is actually the final satellite that I was doing here. Um, we're just finishing its final boost up to its final orbit. Now, obviously, there's going to be some adjustments that need to be made to all of these, and they're not perfect because I didn't have Mech Jeb to do this with. So they're going to be close, but probably not perfect, and they'll get out of phase at some point where um, they won't all line up. But that's part of the beauty of having 24 of these things in orbit uh, is that there's a lot of wiggle room. There's probably going to be between 8 and 10 visible at any point on the surface. So that means uh, we'll have pretty good coverage all the time. Uh, I, when I do these on other planets, I'm probably not going to be quite as detailed and do quite as many satellites because uh, it's kind of a ridiculous number of satellites. But look how pretty that looks. It looks real. Like That is what you see pictures of satellite constellations for GPS looking like. So like I said, it's just 55 degree inclination every hour, and that's what you end up with. And so let's go and actually see this thing in action down on the surface here. We have that rover that we started off with earlier. And as you can see there, it has uh, all the information there. We're going to go ahead and open this up so we can actually see this thing in action, get the wheels deployed here. It has different screens here. Uh, it shows us our heading. It shows uh, the distance to our target, which we can just enter any target we want. Um, I believe there is another status window here in a second that I'll show. But it's it's pretty darn cool. I really like how it shows us in real time. I wish I had this on my MUN rover that I have on the MUN right now because uh, when I updated to point two zero, it screwed everything up. You can see here we have seven, uh, we have eleven satellites in view right there. Um, but like I was saying, when I updated to point two zero, it messed up the Cathane mod, which means that the rover that I planted there before 
is no longer on a deposit and I've been working on moving it to a new deposit so when we actually set up the MUN base um, it will actually work correctly and have Cathane available but unfortunately that has been taking forever and it's a little bit confusing to navigate with the ISA map sat thing and the, everything so this would have actually been really cool to have on that but it's too late for that now I'll have to do a version 2.0 of that at some point that I'll send to other planets um, I don't know what the minimum number of satellites that I need to actually do a, a functional constellation is so I'm gonna have to look into that it probably varies by the planet I would assume the size of the planet probably does matter with that but I'm definitely gonna be setting these up on the MUN and on Minmus because those are in our home system I'll probably eventually put one out at Duna and stuff too because like that's gonna be one of our main bases in the future but uh yeah I'm super pleased with this mod it's very cool it's a lot of work to get one of these things working but it feels pretty cool to actually have it done and this is going to end up being, looks like, maybe a 10 minute episode. So I put like probably, I don't even know, like 3 or 4 hours into getting everything launched. And wee! And it's going to be a 10 minute episode. But uh, I highly recommend checking this out. I'm sure it's a work in progress like everything with KSP is right now. This is a mod that um, is available. It's in the link of mods that I use down below. Again, it's called the Figaro GPS system. And uh, it's pretty cool to actually, I, I'm a big fan of satellites and you know launching things like that and anything that gives me a purpose to a satellite I am definitely in favor of so yeah look at that it looks like some sort of atomic nucleus or something pretty darn neat well anyway thanks guys for watching and I will catch you next time